or let me set the context for the video. In this video, we have Rishabh. Rishabh is an AI engineer at a US-based startup working out of India remotely. He's around 20 years old, I think. He started doing research around 1.5 years ago and he has sprinted through this journey of AI research, probably because he's really good at maths since his GE days. Um, he's one of the few people I've known in the country who actually do core AI and machine learning research. Um, so I thought it makes sense to bring him on the channel uh, to introduce to you guys how can you follow a similar path and learn about core machine learning and AI research. He's divided the video into two parts, applied AI and AI research. You can pick which one makes more sense for you. Uh, generally though, unless you're decently good at math, I would not go down the AI research path. If you are good at full stack development, want to get, go into uh, machine learning or AI as an applied engineer, then the second path is for you. Uh, with that, let's get into the video. Hey everyone, and welcome to the AI roadmap video. We have seen a lot of these comments under our videos, people asking for different AI roadmap. So here's the one. A very big disclaimer before I start the video is that this is the path which worked for me, might not work for you. But the things I cover here are very general things which everyone should know. If you're working in AI, I'll be dividing this into two parts, Core AI and Applied AI. Core AI is where you build the models, use different architectures to make them better, different optimization techniques, different inference optimizations. While Applied AI is more of building on top of these LLM APIs like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. New stuff which came recently or in the past couple of months is AI agents and MCPs. These also comes under the category of applied AI. Before diving deep into the roadmap, I think we should first discuss the problems which you might be facing right now. It is very common for you to fell in the pitfall and never actually start to learn AI. So there's actually new tools dropping every couple of weeks. It's very common for people to get confused of what to learn, when to learn and where to learn. Everyone says something different. I mean, people have their opinions and I'll be sharing mine. Since I've worked on both sides of the industries, research and applied AI, I'll be able to provide you a very wide perspective of what you guys should follow for landing a good job. I think the first and foremost thing you guys should definitely learn is Python fundamentals, which consists of conditional loops, classes and objects and common libraries, NumPy, Pandas, PyTorch. I think this code snippet will give you a very good idea. If you are able to understand this code snippet, what it is doing, can you modify it, can you add new things to it, I think you're good to go with Python. This is the very fundamental because everything will be built on top of Python since it is the widely used language in the AI industry. Moving on to the next thing is classical ML. I'll not ask you to dive very deep into this since this might take a long time and if you are very short on time, you should basically just get the crux of what it is and how it is done. No need to dive deep into in implementation for now, but it will be better if you do it in future. It consists of your regression classification, different classification techniques, different clustering techniques, while also giving you different ideas of evaluations like accuracy, precision, recall, F1 score, etc. It will give you very common ideas of machine learning like cross validation set, train and test split, how do you optimize things, etc. This will build a very good base for you if you're going to get very deeper into AI. And my suggestion is that if you have good enough time, you should definitely start with the first building block, which is to go deep into classical ML. I think the very next step after just getting over classical ML is getting into deep learning, which is just a subset of machine learning. And this basically you should be able to understand what is a neuron, basically a perceptron. What is a neural network? These are built with number of different neurons or perceptrons. You should understand the main algorithm, which is backpropagation, which makes the whole neural network learn something new by changing its weights via backpropagation. You should know about MLPs, activation function, loss functions, optimization, regularization. And again, I've already mentioned different libraries to learn. PyTorch is the holy bible of AI. If you are writing implementation of different architectures, or if you're writing GPU kernels and the library you should focus the most on this is PyTorch since you will be writing a lot of PyTorch to actually write all these architectures. Now that you have built a decent base, you understand what machine learning is, what their different concepts are and how you can use them. You understand what a neural network is, how does it work, what is activation functions, what is loss functions. The very next step for you should be to explore different paths. I'm not saying you should explore all these at the same time, but yeah, pick one, move to next, pick another, move to next. I mentioned basically four parts here, but you can definitely find more. Those are computer vision, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, audio speech and audio processing. What comes under these are 
exactly computer vision basically works with images and video data so it's like working with cnns or convolutional neural networks which help you understand about an image it helps you build models which can detect object or do segmentation of different objects nlp is basically working with textual data you pre process the text data you convert the text into embeddings you learn about sequence models you learn about rnns lstms gru you learn about named entity recognition etc these all comes under the entity of natural language processing reinforcement learning is a very old field and suddenly got popular into the world of large language models but the reinforcement learning we use in llms is very different from what classical reinforcement learning is it is good for you to dive deeper into both i think if you are very good in rl or understand the concepts very deeply the very best option for you to is to work under some robotic company or maybe make something of your own this goes through concepts like mdps markov decision processes deep q networks policy gradient methods etc while the next step or the next path you guys can follow is speech and audio processing which is your like the next path you guys can follow is speech and audio processing which consists of text to speech automatic speech recognition etc you should explore all these paths individually give them their time i think after you have given them enough time you will be able to understand what is the best for you either you are good with cv are you good with rl are you good with nlp if i talk about my experience i also dive deep into very different fields i tried computer vision i tried rl i tried nlp what attracted me most was nlp and rl moving on to the holy grail which changed everything is transformers you should understand how it works what's the whole architecture how does data flow inside it what is multi head attention what is attention mechanism what is self attention all on by latest advancements like mixture of experts multi head latent attention etc how built up rhyme of this earlier on this channel where you can learn about how data flow inside transformers and how does it internally work we incorporate incorporate the meaning of hello into this one we okay so we need some kind of structure or pattern by watching that video i think you'll be able to learn how transformers work intuitively and also how they are able to process and actually learn all this data moving on to the hot topic right now which is large language models such as gpt claude gemini all of these are considered under the category of large language models since they have very large number of parameters in them so they are large language models i have divided them into three stages these are basically the training stages of a model a model goes through three training stages which are pre training mid training and post training in each step model learns something new pre training is when the model learns from scratch we give it a massive amount of data architecture optimization techniques and make it learn something which gives a base model followed by mid training when we give this model domain specific knowledge like math science etc this can also be named as continual pre training since the model will now learn more of these domain specific knowledge and will converge on these the next part of the pipeline is post training where the model is tuned to work as a chatbot before this step the model is just an expert predictor what instruct tuning do is it makes it works like a chatbot so it understands that user ask a question and i have to answer it in a certain way rlhf rlvr test time compute all comes under the category of post training where the model learns to not give harmful advices or not give harmful content while also we induce the capability of thinking which is test time compute to model at this stage all of these three stages need different experts to work on them when you understand how a transformer work how a large language model work you will be able to understand what pre training mid training post training means becoming an expert in any one of these fields can result you a very good pay while also being very respected if you become or if you learn about any of these field and get into it very deep you will be able to crack a job easily one other thing you guys can learn about is fine tuning fine tuning is basically training your model on some specific data so that it gives the best result based on that data it can be done by some common libraries like sloth or hugging face trl it goes if you want to understand more of how does it works there's different techniques like low rank optimization quantized low rank optimizations how does adapters work etc all these together make you understand how does fine tuning work which is basically updating some set of parameters so a model can learn from a new data i think this kind of sums up what core ai is mean i'm not going very deep into this and each step of this pipeline is divided into many subsets once you understand these you will be able to dive into deeper concept yourself moving on to some easy stuff comparatively easy stuff 
which is basically applied AI, the very first thing you need to understand is working with LLM APIs like Cloud, ChatGPT, any API. You should be able to call it, make it response to your input. What you can learn here is basically prompt engineering, function calling, tool use, etc. Prompt engineering basically engineering a prompt which gives a certain output when given a certain input and basically increase the chance of right output. Function calling in is when you give a model a specific function which the model can use and give the output in JSON so that you can further use it in your pipeline. Moving on to embeddings and vector databases. So the concept behind this is that converting a textual data into a vector database. So think of it in an n-dimensional space where you can put different data and similar data gets clustered into same domain. Here you need to learn about how does similarity matrix works? What is indexing? How can I do best retrieval? So that you can, if you learn these very well, you will be able to understand RAG easily, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. RAG consists of loading a document, pre-processing it, using different chunking strategies, using re-ranking models, using hybrid search like dense search, BM25 search, to actually use data from a local database, pass into your LLM and get a better result. Why this is done? All the data is not used to train LLMs. Some data might be private or some data might be new after the model has gone through its training stage. So this is when RAG comes in. Intuitively what RAG does is it provides an external database which consists of these new data sources or any private data sources which the LLM can query and get the output from the text data and use it in its prompt to give a final output. You'll have to do a lot of evaluations to make sure your RAG model is working well without any hallucinations. Those hallucinations can break the further pipelines. Moving on to the hot stuff right now, which are AI agents. What are AI agents should be your first question. So you'd be able to understand what AI agents are, which basically stands for anything which can perceive, reason and act. You need to understand what tool uses, what function calling is, how can you give an agent a tool, how can it use it. What is planning? What is memory? How can I keep more memory? How can I make a consistent agent which keeps the previous memories? How can I build a multi-agent system? Good framework for this is Langgraph, Langchain, Camel, etc. A few months ago, Anthropic came with Model Context Protocol, which is like a universal USB you can put into an AI model and it basically standardizes everything. So you can connect anything with it. Either it's your DB or some API or you want to execute your code. You can basically just make an MCP server of it and just connect it to your LLM. Your LLM will then be able to use this and fetch or do anything with this information. Before MCP, you might need to have different API for everything. But what MCP does is basically a middleware between these different apps and your LLMs which standardize everything. MLOps and Prod is the easiest field if you're currently working as a Web2 engineer or basic backend engineer. Since here you'll be working with Docker, Kubernetes to deploy these built models, doing experiment tracking, inference optimizations via ULM, TensorRT, and monitoring your models for any breakage or changes. Now moving on to the most important part of this video, some general advice and takeaways. General advice from me would be to be up to date with this field. The sources you guys can refer to are Twitter, Archive, Hugging Face Spaces, and Hugging Face News. The key to keep on learning is always be curious and learn the next thing, build the next project and do that thing. In this field, you have to be a rapid developer, adapting to things fast and executing things fast. That is what will make you unique and might help you getting a job soon. I think the one thing you should take away from this video is that don't just keep on learning the theory or just watching a video, completing a lecture series. Instead, start building a project. You'll learn a lot more by building something then you are learning by just posting some video or reading some blogs. This was a very brief AI roadmap, which will give you an overall idea of how things are currently working in the AI space. After this, you'll be able to yourself dive into deeper concepts, look at new tech and just understand them, how they work. You'll become a rapid developer in the field of AI by using AI. You'll know where to find, what to find and when to find. If I talk from my experience, what the industry currently needs is someone who understands concepts very deeply if you are working in core AI. While working in applied AI, what I got to know is that you have to be a rapid developer. You have to understand new tech fast, integrate it into your system, build docs on top of it, build projects on top of it while using AI. Since it has given a boost to all the developers, so now you have to adapt to it as well. With this, I'd like to end the video. I'll see you in the next one.